Our next molecule to take a look at is again a square planar styled compound. But here we have two different substituents, three of one type and one of another. So we want to see what the uh, symmetry operations that are present in this particular molecule. So first, as we always are want to do, we want to look for the high order rotation axis. And we want to see if we have a C2 anymore, or a C4. So first, let's look for the C4. We will rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees. And we see that, oh, most of them line up, but we have a green over a pink. This tells us that this molecule does not have a C4. Let's try, go back to the beginning. Now we're going to rotate 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. And we rotate 90 degrees there. And again, we see that it doesn't line up. Therefore, this molecule does not have a C4 to the minus 1, at least in that direction. Again, let's try go by 180 degrees to see if we have a C2. So we rotate this. And we see that orange goes to pink, pink goes to orange, pink goes to green, sorry. Um, they, they go to something different. That's all that's important. So therefore, we do not have a C2 operation in that direction either. So uh, in this direction, the only the high order rotation axis is just a C1, it's just identity. So we'll have to see if we have anything more interesting than that in the molecule. Otherwise, let's see if we have any mirror planes. Now, because it's a planar molecule, we know that we have to have a mirror in the plane of the board, the mirror in the plane of the molecule. So there's always that particular mirror. We have to be careful what we call that because uh, until we know what the high order rotation axis is, we don't know whether to call that a vertical mirror or a horizontal mirror. Now, if we take the molecule this way, and we go along this particular diagonal and rotate it by 180 degrees, we see that we have a C2, and all the atoms line up. So in this particular direction, we have a C2. So our high order rotation axis is C2, but it's not perpendicular to the plane of the molecule. That's very common, doesn't have to be. And this is a good example of a case where it doesn't have to be. And because the C2 is actually in the same plane as the plane of the molecule, which is the one of the mirror planes, the mirror plane that's horizontal, seems like it's horizontal because it's in the plane of the molecule, is not a horizontal mirror, it's a vertical mirror. And it has to be a vertical mirror because it's not perpendicular. Now, when we have a high order rotation axis in a mirror, there are only two possibilities. Either the high order rotation axis is perpendicular to the mirror, or it's in the mirror. they are the only two possibilities. If it's perpendicular to the mirror, that makes the mirror a horizontal mirror. If the high order rotation axis is actually in the plane, in, in the mirror plane, we call the mirror plane a vertical mirror. So we see that the, the plane of the molecule is actually a vertical mirror. We actually find another vertical mirror here along this line. So if we fold along the diagonal, we see that green goes with green, pink goes with pink, pink goes with pink. So we actually have a horizontal, uh, a mirror plane going along here, which is a vertical mirror. So the symmetry elements that we have, we have a C2. That's a high order rotation axis. We have a mirror, which is a vertical mirror this way. We have a vertical mirror this way, and we have the identity. We have exactly four symmetry elements. This is a very important point group, C2V. In fact, when in doubt, if you're on an examination and you don't know the point group of a molecule, it is always a good idea to guess C2V. C2V is the point group symmetry of water, among other important molecules. So let's just take one more example where you have a more complicated substitution pattern. So here we have three different substituents, two pinks, one green, and one orange. And we want to see what the symmetry of this particular molecule is going to be. We want to look for our high order rotation axis. So push pin through the center. And we won't do all the examples here, but you can convince yourself that if you try a 90 degree rotation, so it started off that way. Let's start off where it's lined up. Okay, it's lined up now. Now let's go by 90 degrees. If you go by 90 degrees, you'll see that everything changes. If you go by 90 degrees in the opposite direction, if you go clockwise, nothing lines up. So there's no C4. You can also rearrange it the way it was, and now go for a 
C2, a 180 degree rotation. We see that when we do that, nah, it doesn't line up. So we don't have a C2, a C4, or a C3. The high order rotation axis for this type of molecule actually turns out to be C1. That's the highest uh, order rotation axis that we have. And the only other symmetry element other than the identity is the mirror plane in the plane of the molecule. So again, we have our mirror plane. We can do that by just throwing, throwing a mirror there. And now this is a vertical mirror because it's we only consider it to be a horizontal mirror if the high order rotation axis is more than one. If it's trivially uh, C1, the identity, we don't call it a horizontal mirror. So it has just one mirror and the identity. So it has only two symmetry operations. This is a special group which we call CS, where the small s stands for Spiegel, which means mirror. So this only has two symmetry operations. So we started from D4H, which has lots of symmetry operations, through down through D2H, down to C2V only has four symmetry operations, and then we get down to CS, which has two. Now remember, it has to have at least two symmetry operations because it's planar. Because it's planar, it's going to have a mirror plane, and every molecule, no matter how crazy it looks, always has the identity operation. So it always has E. So in this case, we have two symmetry operations. So we've gone through uh, many, but not all, of the possible substitution patterns for this square. In the next episode, in episode four, we are going to take a look at the substitution patterns for ethylenes, which are very, very important organic compounds, and which actually lead to certain interesting point group uh, assignments and difficulties. So we will take a look at those um, in our next, at next episode. So until then, episode four, have a good one.